Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And this is the book that I'll be sharing from, Gurus for a Higher Enlightenment for Sale. An insider's guide into the relationship between spiritual teachers, students and centers. This is by my guru, His Eminence, the 25th, Samtu Kurim Pushing. I'll be reading from page 165, Centers with high-ranking and well-known gurus. And I'll go to a picture to share with you. And this is my guru on his throne. Okay, page 165. Centers with high-ranking and well-known gurus. Dharma centers that are under, patro under the patronage or the spiritual guidance of a Rinpoche or a renowned guru or master definitely pull more weight than a center that is under a teacher who is not as well known. We must realize that even the gurus who are well known were not well known at one time. The gurus who are not famous now may become famous at another time. Actually, there is no difference but within normal worldly perceptions, we tend to think that a center must be doing something right if the guru has a big name, many books under his name, a great publicist, a high title, and a wealthy estate with a lot of sponsors. Some gurus choose to be very humble, simple, and not grow big. For example, there is a great master, Jiangse Geshe Yeshe of Ganden Jiangse Monastery, who has been repeatedly requested to submit his name under the candid candidacy, candidacy for abbot of the monastery. And he has repeatedly turned it down. If his name is sent to His Holiness the 14 Dalai Lama, I believe without being presumptuous that His Holiness would definitely choose him. But he repeatedly says no. Although he says no, they put him on a very high throne when he attend, attends pujas and ceremonies in the monastery. Just because some centers have these elite, well-known gurus, it does not necessarily mean their gurus are better than the gurus who are not well known. The quality of a guru does not reflect in his status, rank or position. The ranking of a guru is determined by hierarchy, according to the monastic system. However, a guru's attainments cannot be judged by a monastic system at all. There are some very famous and well-known gurus Geshe's and Rinpoche's out there who have many, many centers, but if they go to the monasteries, they do not have a throne or any special seating. It does not mean they are bad. Within the monastic system, it simply means that they have been working more outside the monastery, so they have not reached a high hierarchical, hierarchical position. Hierarchical position gained from working within the monasteries. People realize this in Tibet, where there are gurus with no rank or position that everybody flocks to see. Gen Ningma Rinpoche, who I had the great fortune to meet and befriend in Ganden Monastery, had no rank. If you put him into Ganden's prayer hall, he would have no throne. He would just have an ordinary, normal cushion with every other monk. It does not mean he was not spiritually attained. Monk and lay people from all over Mangod flock, flocked to see him all the time. However, there are people in other countries who, when they have high-ranking gurus, teachers or Rinpoches in their centres, use that to press down other centres to validate their centre and practice as good. They sometimes try to make members influence members and steal members by saying our guru is so and so. Our guru has this many centres. Our guru has very well-known students. 
Our Guru travels to so many countries a year. Our Guru is good, so come to our centre. What they do not understand is that maybe 10 years ago, nobody had even heard of their Guru. Actually, when they do that, they are the worst reflection of their high-ranking Guru and his lineage. If their Guru is high-ranking, we would assume that he must also be highly attained. It is not necessarily so, but we would assume that. If their Guru is highly attained, then he would advise his students not to do things like that. Those of us who have heard, of, heard those things may wonder if the Guru really is like that, or if those persons are really sincere. The Guru may be good, but we wonder why his students practice and behave like that. If we cannot think any deeper or higher, we will be attracted to that name, position and status. We will not be attracted to the Dharma practice. Then it is not a Dharma practice and we are not going there for Dharma. We are going there for the reputation we have heard people talked about, for the famous people, the big centre and the big people. The people who are under the patronage of and have the luck and merit to be under a high guru must be even humbler, kinder, more down-to-earth and diligent in their practice. Their behaviour behavior should be very ethical. They have an extraordinary special responsibility to be even more committed, to have very strong guru devotion and to be very, very nice to everybody else. That would reflect the high status of their Guru. If they do not do that, it will not reflect his greatness. A great person is not petty. A great person is not focused on minor issues. A great person is focused on big issues. We must think, if our Guru is His Holiness so and so, and we run around putting down other Gurus, criticising their lineage, practice and traditions, did our Guru teach us that? If our Guru taught us that, is our Guru high? If our Guru does, did not teach us to do that, but we are doing it anyway, are we making our Guru look high? Is talking and acting like that the result of hanging around high guru, our high Guru? People who belong to high-ranking gurus must be very, very careful and aware in their practice because they love their guru. They have guru devotion and they have faith. That is how I think it should be. Members and students in the Dharma centers of high, well-known, famous gurus also have a special responsibility to be more encouraging to other centers. If their guru is very eminent and well-known, it is very easy for them to get sponsors, centers, members, assistants and resources. So why do they need to squash other centers that may not have a guru, well known or not, to guide them? Instead of being greedy and taking everybody's members, they should encourage other centers' activities and growth. A sign of eminence and greatness is not competitiveness or jealousy but rejoicing in other people's well-being and growth. Because they are doing so well and, being, and because they are kind, these centers under a high famous guru should be the ones to encourage other people to their guru. They should be the ones giving donations to encourage other people's center to grow and to give discounts to members and students of other centers. The extension of their kindness is to help other centers and their members and to encourage them. The smaller centers or centers that do not have high-ranking, well-known gurus will find it difficult to get sponsorship, members and people because outwardly they do not have anything to attract those things yet. They do not have the resources to get their books everywhere or to distribute flyers and advertisements. They do not have resources to make their centre big. They do not have beautiful statues or even a place to house a lot of people. It does not mean their gurus are not good. The responsibility will fall more on the well-known guru students and centres to help everybody else and not to suppress other centres, other sects, 
or other lineages. And with that, I end my sharing for today. And um, just to share with you that um, our Guru, His Eminence, the 25th Sam Tukur Rinpoche, is always very adamant that we do not ever um, encourage other students to leave their Guru just to come to our centres. He's always very supportive of other centres and other Gurus and always tells us to encourage the students of that centre or other Gurus to remain ro uh, loyal to you know, their own centres and their Gurus. So that is the trait of our Guru because um, he, he just, you know, he doesn't feel that it's right, you know, that um, people, the students, should be influenced to hop, you know, around to other centres. You know, as he's mentioned before, that um, each teacher or each guru has his own method of teaching. And um, when the student's centre hops, hops around, you know, different, different centres, then they may get confused, you know, and also it will delay their spiritual growth. So that is one just to share with you. And thank you again for sharing my, your time with me. And I will end this with a completion dedication in Tibetan. Jang Jo Sen Jo Rin Po Shi Ma Ge Pa Nam Ge Shi Ge Pa Nam Pa Me Pa Yang Go Ni Go Ndu Pe Ho Shu Tu Ni Tu Wa Rin Po Shi Ma Ge Pa Nam Ge Shi Ge Pa Nam Pa Me Pa Yang Go Ni Go Ndu Pe Ho Shu Da Sun Ji Ni Sa Pa Ge Wa Di Da Dan Tru Wa Go Na Ga Pa Da Je Pa Je Su No Sen Tra Pa Yi Tam Pi Ngi Po Rin Du Sa Se Sho Ge Wa Kun Tu Yen Da La Ma Da Tra Mi Chu Ki Pa La Na Chu Che Sa Da Ma Ngi Ya Te Ra Su Ni Do Jin Shang Ngi Wa Pa Nga Tu Su Nghe wan di nyo du da la ma sang ke dru yo ne dru a chi kya ma lu pa de yi sa la ko pa shu Cho ki ka pu sung ka pa cho su na pa pe wa la ke ki sa ma si wa da tun ki ma lu sa wa shu Da da sun yu du sun da dru wa song yi la te ni ge wa la sun tra pa yi Tam pa yu ri fa gyu shi Ni mo de le sen de le ni mi gu nyan da le shi ni sen ta tu da le pa ho Kun chu sung yi jing yi lo kun chu sung yi ngo tru su kun chu sung yi tra si shu Jesus nam ma kusen rap ting ching nong ta tri ni cho cho ke pa da Nong sam ten pe dro me sap song yi dro e mso ta tu ni ge u shi Gang ri rang wai ko wai shing kam den Pen han den wa ma lu gyo wai ni Chan ren si wan ten sing kya song yi Sha pe shu ni pa ru ten ge u shi Hom tong pe ngot ru ma lu pa den den da la sao tu so Ko dan den pa long chot no ke pa su shik shuk ten sao Thank you and I do hope that you join me for my next session.